meeting of the lessons learned work group and hopefully it'll be the last meeting of this of this group. Uh, we have a majority of the senators present. Uh, uh, we're still waiting for uh, our co chair, Senator Ballin, who is here. Sorry, uh, you just popped up on, on the screen. Uh, the uh, initial draft report uh, of the work group is posted on the work group's webpage, and all the members, I believe, have, have a copy of it. And the object of today's meeting is to uh, briefly go over, not necessarily line by line, uh, what's in the report to make sure that we're all in agreement, that we haven't left anything important out that, that ought to be added at this point, and to deal with any comments that members of the committee think needs uh, to be added to the report. Uh, we apologize that uh, Senator Collimore's name uh, does not appear as one of the authors on the report. That's one of the things that we will fix because our intent is to make sure that everybody involved in this exercise has their fingerprints on it somehow. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you, sir. That being said, Senator Ballant, uh, have anything to add or, or would you like to add something at this point? No, I just would love people to give, you know, their once over to make sure we're really capturing what the um, different committees said and if we did a good job of um, really calling together the main themes and we just want another set of eyes to make sure we've really captured the feeling of the Senate. Um, let's at this point, uh, uh, does any, anybody else on the committee have any comment that they'd like to make at this point before we start out? Uh, the, the, I, I just noted in in our subsection that we sent in, we had a little preamble that just pointed out the some really crude facts about <clears throat> the the Vermont economy. I mean, one of the things I, I guess I just wonder if others agree. I it seems um, important to me that we just recognize that the pandemic has exacerbated, uh, maybe it's just a, a sentence like that, you know, all of the weaknesses that were already um, alive and well in, in our economy. We, we did it by a, par uh, a paragraph about how little Vermonters have in savings, you know, 46% or something have couldn't, couldn't afford a thousand dollar crisis if their car breaks down, those kinds of data points. And it doesn't have to be that, but I, I'm, I haven't read the whole draft. I'm just looking through and I don't see it anywhere. And I, um, it, it's not vital, but it does seem to me to be pretty, pretty central to, you know, if somebody said, well, why has, the pandemic been so hard. I think we would have to say, well, our economy had a bunch of weak spots anyway. And, you know, so to me, that is kind of important. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big focus or anything, but it, it ought to be in there to kind of help if the public's watching or reading this report, us honor what the reality is for them. I don't know if others agree, but. Senator Clarkson. Hi, good morning, everybody. Sorry, I was a minute late. Uh, I, I, I agree with Chris because it's one of the lessons we've learned is that is is how vulnerable they are. Uh, and if we're to, to really do something to incentivize savings or a, a stronger financial foundation upon which every Vermonter is resting their 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 lives, I, I think that's one of the lessons we've learned that we need to actually figure out how to do something about, whether it's income, whether it's saving, wh whatever it is, they had all, a vast majority of people, I mean, a large number of people had not enough personally to rely on in, in, in this crisis uh, when, their, when their jobs were, were, were taken away. And I, I do think that's one of our lessons. We've known it for a long time, but this has exacerbated it. Any, any other comment? Uh, That's Well, we certainly can go back following uh, this call and <laughs> examine that issue and, 
and perhaps modify the the intro if, uh, if 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 all of you feel that that's something that's desirable. Uh, Senator McCormick. Yeah. No. Uh, thanks. I, I see we have a fairly long list of of yeah. problems uh, slash suggestions, and and I. I think it's a good list and it includes some things that I've been particularly concerned about. My fear is that it's a long enough list that some things could almost get lost in it. And there are a couple of problems that I think are real standouts and we might wanna give them their own separate section. I'm thinking in particular of the fiasco at, at labor and the computers and the lesson learned, mm -hmm. I see two lessons. One is that we really we really need to, to upgrade our computer system. Mm -hmm. But the other one is no matter how excellent the computer system is, there are times when you really do need to talk to a person, not because you feel yeah. the emotional need to, but because no one is enough of a genius to program the computers so it actually is ready for yeah. every situation. And there are times when someone's looking at the screen and what's there does not speak to their particular situation. And they don't know what to do. They want to cooperate. And they need at some point to talk to a person. And getting through on the phone at labor was also impossible. So I think upgrade the computer system and provide for direct, innovative human contact as well. And I would give that its own line rather than just and we might have something like have that and other problems of, of, of equal i think the confusion about how one complies with the governor's isolation orders you know mm -hmm. i got calls you know, do i do this or do i do that and, and yeah. where do you go for that information and is it being is it mandatory or is it a request you know right. um, that i think is another one. but then we could have something like other problems and that, mm -hmm. that's, that, that comprehensive list goes on that. I, I agree. Um, if I could just add one thing before we go to Senator Hooker, um, just to, to highlight something that you said early on, Senator McCormick, you said, I don't know if it really is the emotional piece. I actually think that's a big part of what I heard yeah. from my constituents is actually they just needed to hear a human because yes. Just the even if I couldn't help them, they were like, yeah, "There is somebody there." It, you know, we're not That's in some true. dystopian, you know, Soviet nightmare that nobody ever answers the phone. So, um, so I do think that can 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 be part of it, and we shouldn't be shy about saying that. I don't think. Um, well, you know, I wonder. There's a twofold problem: is obviously getting to someone human who can answer the question, but in many cases, it's because the question wasn't answered. Uh, early on or wasn't yeah. apparent or couldn't be gotten to uh, on the first click, if you will, that that then forced people to try to find somebody who could deal with complexity. And that to me is is one of the uh, one of the real things as we look forward to the better use of artificial intelligence. Uh, for example, uh, there, there are, are situations in which uh, you have systems that learn. The motor vehicle department would be a classic example. Uh, you put a tape recorder down in front of everybody who handles and answers questions with motor vehicle and you record them. And you look at those answers of questions that people ask, and then you program that into your artificial yeah. intelligence so that they get answered. And it's only those things that are so far outside of the norm that has to get routed in the first place. It gets answers. To, and, and this, again, industry is doing this a lot and, and very effectively. And that's, again, one of the things we got to look at, how to answer things quickly and intelligently so that it reduces the number of times that someone has to ask for that human to, to go through complexity or handholding. And I'm, I agree with Randy about artificial intelligence and all, but one of the things that I think that we saw um, during this whole situation was that people were getting people who didn't have any connection, who didn't really know, you know, where to send stuff. And it had to do I, a lot, I think, with doing using outside vendors. So you talked about, you know, being able to sign kind of turn um, the um, responsibility or the um, get people who have already worked within the state system and be able to move them to different areas to help people as they call in. And, and that's something I think that we need to do because looking for vendors and stuff took a long time. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we need to utilize the people that we have here in the state, especially in this situation where people were at home, you know, off from their jobs, they could have turned around and, and been brought back in more quickly. So uh, the artificial intelligence thing, I think is probably the way of the future, but now what do we have? And that, that just makes me think about um, all of what we're relying on that is so um, new age and stuff, you know, what do we do if all of that stuff fails? You know, what's our backup plan then? And can, do we, are we ready to sort of go back to old ways of doing things if we have to? So. Mm. Uh, Senator Calbor. Thank you. So if folks can look on page eight, um, I think just there's a piece that we can consolidate it starts right at the bottom of the page, what should we do to be better prepared? And the first thing that's addressed is the broadband access. And then if you go down a few more, it talks about um, schools and the ability or not ability to, uh, I think you can close that broadband access so that uh, all of that is included in that one statement rather than have a separate bullet point um, for a school situation. And to Senator McCormick's um, comment, I agree with him. On page nine, the third bullet down has to do with the Department of Labor. <clears throat> that should probably be the first thing on that list about, because uh, I do think for many of us, that was the number one, I don't want to say, well, yeah, I guess it was a complaint. It was the number one issue for so many people yeah. was, was the inability to reach anybody and to have somebody help them through that process. So I don't think it's like the eighth or ninth point. I think it's the number one point for me. Okay. Thank you. Senator Ballant. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up. There are, there are actually, I'm realizing four of us from the Economic Development Committee. Did we ever get a clear answer from the, the commissioner about how much the folks at Max, uh, what's the name of the vendor, Mac, Max Maximus? how much they were being paid. I know we had some concerns that they might be um, hiring people at a, a lower rate than would have been the going rate here. I and don't, I don't know if- I don't think we've had testimony to that. Okay. No, we did not get an answer to economic, but we did not get an answer to that question, correct. Okay. And we should and follow I know up. that, yeah, okay. And that may be outside this report, but those of us on economic development should follow up on that. Yeah. Uh, Senator Clarkson. Uh, I, I, I agree that this is a, a great uh, bullet. I think that IT investment is sort of like the fire trucks in all our towns. We need a, 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 a constant upgrade of all our IT systems. It, uh, DOL was the, was the clearest challenge in this, um, but we need to be cognizant that even though it's incredibly expensive, we need to be planning for it. So I agree with all of you. This needs to be front and center to the lesson we have learned is that we need constant, regular, major investment in staying current. Uh, and uh, this boy, we our pant, we were really caught with our pants down. We knew that labor one in particular had needed upgrading for years uh, since the recession. In fact, I mean, we were complaining about it in two thousand eight. So. Uh, Really, we need a, a, a really thoughtful way to, to constantly invest in, in uh, keeping current on IT. So uh, I, I think it's you know bigger than labor. I think it's all of state government needs to, I mean, that needs to be front and center. Well, IT and broadband are the two things that really surface to the top. Yeah. Uh, but this whole issue of connectivity is, I think in some ways is almost greater than IT because if you could imagine that if our connectivity failed, uh, our ability to manage this crisis at all would be right. tremendously damaged. Well, uh, there's another crisis coming, you know, there, there's a conceivable, as Cheryl said, I mean, what happens when the grid goes down? What happened, you know, and cyber and a cyber, cyber security uh, crisis is one we are completely unprepared for. So now here we are putting our eggs in the basket mm -hmm. of get, get better prepared from a, a, an electronic communication point of view. But there's also the possibility that one of the next crises may be no electronic communication possible. It may be. 
I, you know, I wouldn't say we're totally unprepared for cyber issues. There, there are backup plans. There are, oh. there's in depth. I mean, we're not totally unprepared, but I, I, I guess I, yeah. preparation obviously could be much better than and much more robust than it is right now. Yeah, right. I didn't mean to imply we weren't prepared. I know. I, I mean, yeah. I've heard yeah. from Matt and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we started off with the uh, the preamble with just these overall observations, and I, I think these are, are very good points the committee is making. We'll try to do some modifications here uh, 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 today or the evening. Today is pretty full to have a lot of time to work, but. Uh, to, to incorporate these things and make modifications. Uh, anything else in terms of just the preamble or the overall piece that, that you think we need to say or, or should include before we perhaps delve down a little bit in terms of some of the, uh, the individual findings to make sure that we have agreement on what we've said. Then let's take a look starting uh, at, the, at the top uh, as we go into the positive aspects of our general response to the, the pandemic. Uh, can we put that up on screen, Mike? Now, I'm not sure the extent to which we can zero in because everybody is everybody able to read that, or do you have the hard copies in front of you? <clears throat> yeah, I printed it out so I could actually read it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, just in terms of positive, I have aspect, it on my own larger screen. Yeah, I don't know that, you know, we necessarily need to read each and every line, but if the committee members could simply scan those major points under it and see if there's any disagreement or anything that ought to be added in the committee's opinion. Our committees got up, joint rules and Senate rules were very effective in, in getting us organized. Uh, yeah. The committees have worked well with the administration in the emergency and we generally had good communication with the administration on this. And uh, I think one thing that is, is a credit to the group is political agendas got shelved and, and folks were able to work together to get things done. Those were the high points. Anything else that, that fits into that general response? Senator Buck, this is Andy. Yes. Um, I just wanted to go back to the preamble. I don't know if we decided we were gonna I agreed with Senator Pearson about putting something in there about kind of the, the shakiness of what of our economic system was before this started. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, we 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 will will address okay. that. Okay. I think there was a general consensus that it would be useful to put that in the preamble. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we'll take care of that. Okay, okay let's move on to the positive legislative uh, and administrative action uh, section. Uh, it appeared as if we, we believe that we did do a strong public health response in terms of what we did legislatively. Uh, vulnerable Vermonters uh, were protected with a safety debt. Uh, we did a great job, I think, and many of us do with our homeless population. We had mm -hmm. virtually zero uh, coronavirus cases, which I think is, makes us perhaps yeah. unique in the nation in that regard. Uh, we dealt with the eviction issue uh, uh, and expanded unemployment. Childcare uh, plans were up and running. I, I don't know the sustainability of this, this system, though, I think is, is certainly in question. There are many of the child care agencies we find right now are, are struggling and uh, we certainly will need to go back and take a look at the whole child care issue. I, 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 th I think one of the top uh, uh, takeaways that's positive is the transparency to state government and to municipal government by enabling, uh, uh, by making the Open meeting law more flexible, and by meeting in the in these fat in this way, um, I think we've brought. A, I think one of the biggest pluses is that the increased transparency to state government and to local government through uh, some of our legislation. I mean, all the work we did on municipal meetings and uh, enabling. So I, I would, in some ways, put that you know up near the top. Okay. Any, any other so far? 
and do speak up because I, I can't see everybody yeah. with the uh, the document in front. I can't see everybody who wants to speak. So please feel feel free to to raise any question that you have. I, I, uh, do we need the document on the screen? I don't. Unless somebody's reading it, 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 it would be easier to see each other. Does anybody not have a copy of the document in front of them? Okay, Mike, then why don't we dispense with that? That way we can see each other. Okay. Uh, we talked at least briefly here about uh, remote learning. However, the effectiveness of it still is, is uncertain in terms of the remote learning uh, uh, of where we are. And that Food certainly has issue. to do with One, that is sufficiently fleshed out uh, in terms of we, we, we don't mention at all things like the guard and the distribution of food there, which probably ought to be mentioned in retrospect. Uh, I, it, one comment that I had on the on the bullet point, the second bullet point on page three seems kind of a, just like an anecdotal comment more than lessons learned and if we're trying to i think there'd be some value in making the list a little shorter 10 pages of bullet points is as senator mccormick said it's going to get things get kind of lost so for me that would be an example of something we could take out unless somebody feels strongly that the, the homeless patient mean no, no. The, the second part? one on treatment which is about some senators thought that youtube recordings Provide for witnesses provided more complete answers. I mean, maybe some senator said that, but I don't know if just saying that some senator said something is worth saying. Mm. <laughs> you, know, right. you say it's it's not worthy of <laughs> of the list. I don't know if that's a lesson learned. So sorry, Andy, are you talking about under positive legislation, the the one that says we're the second bullet, we're able to keep a safety net in place for vulnerable? Oh, it's, it's bullet number two on page three. Correct. Oh, oh, on page three. I wonder. Uh, it strikes me, Andy, that you you you've hit on something. Like some of these are just sort of interesting reflections and not necessarily right positives. And I don't know if the I don't know if it, it warrants being in here or it's some, some other information that we should have in our back pocket or do we have another section that says, you know, our, our um, unanticipated results I, I just, or, I don't know. <clears throat> I, I just think it, it, you guys have done a great job on a first draft and I think it now behooves all of us to actually take the time to read it and help edit and, and consolidate. I think that's, you, you've well, done a terrific job. We sent you a lot of, I mean, everybody sent you a lot of stuff and you've done a great first blush, you know, first stroke of it. But uh, I think it's that kind of edit that is important. And then consolidating, what are the top priorities in each section and then adding some other bullet points, but but condensing it a bit as we've already talked well, about. One of the things is that, that in many cases we can, uh, deal with the summary bullet point and if need be expand a little bit under it but again without uh, creating a, a detailed narrative which I think will lose people and that may be a way to reduce the number of bullets and 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 make those things that are at the top of the importance list up so on this particular one that, that Andy's pointed out uh, I think that is, is 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 correct I mean I, I certainly had a question on that bullet myself and, and, and that Becca and I talked about during the course of our putting this together may be that simply talking about the uh, transparency issue we talked about a couple of, of, of seconds ago is the more important point in all of this mm -hmm. is that the methodology that we've used by going online, one of the lessons we've learned is that we've been able to make what we do more transparent by bringing more people into the picture who can see what's going on. And I think that's probably the more important point than uh, that it leads to provide witnesses with more complete answers. And I'm not frankly sure right. that's entirely correct on its face. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that, that third bullet could be part of the first bullet on page three. You know, it's like that, it's just reiterating what is basically already said in the first bullet. So, okay, Senator Pearson. I thought, uh, Randy, were you just, uh, uh, this is a great conversation. I agree with pretty much everything people are saying. Were you just suggesting that? 
we would have a, a fatter opening bullet or or mm -hmm. paragraph and then a bunch mm -hmm. of enumerations was that what i heard i was say? actually thinking that that the opening bullet stands on its own on where we are now the opening paragraph and i would expand a little bit of some of the succeeding bullet bits and consolidate them so as to have fewer bullets okay that, yeah that's I, what i was suggesting yeah i think I think I think that's a good goal. You could do it either way, um, sort of a, a sub bullet, so that if they're just indented, then I mean, if it were me, I would know that I could glance at them, but I'd be really looking at the. But it, it, anyway, you slice it. I think a lot of this, I can't disagree with any of it, but a lot of it is pretty close to, or could be combined in some way. Um, right. Mm -hmm. um, just to shorten it up, because I agree well, with you. Well, the goal perhaps might be to reduce the number of bullets, but to make them more, uh, to make them a bit fuller. Right. And, and let me just say, I was thrilled to see all the bullets, because it does make it very quick to read. And other, uh, it, so I don't want to go into big paragraphs and sacrifice yeah. bullets. Yeah, that was, that was uh, our goal. We, you know, we, we debated initially, do we do a narrative report? And we elected to do a report with bullets because it would be easier to read and and the points would stand out uh, uh, individually a little bit better but i think yeah. we can get, get a middle ground that still focuses on the bulleted approach but but tries to reduce some of the volume mm -hmm. it has a clear way where the just by order the top, the more important ones are at the top or like chris just suggested some some are bolted and then some are intended to be sub bullets that aren't as important Okay. Uh, just zipping down page three, uh, if you could look over it just very quickly and see if there's anything here on, on, on here that stands out that we should focus on any additional. Well, I agree I, I, that the caucuses that we have, the caucuses of a whole, have made committees uh, more aware of what other committees are doing. Mm -hmm. It also helps us. Uh, stay better on on the overall yeah. picture of what's going on in the body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and that's what's interesting is that's something that we don't do in the regular session. And so this may you know this perhaps is has given us something that we can use in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I would agree. Agree. Uh, I, uh, uh, I think that on on one of the big issues that I think one of our takeaways is going to be is building into statute abilities that when we go into an emergency, certain things kick in automatically. And so to the bullet about greater flexibility in regard to, in fact, to all things, I mean, that what this has made very clear is that we need to enable state government to move into a mode to address quickly and flexibly certain emergencies. And we saw that not just with regulation, but with temporary licensure in a whole lot of areas um, we, I think this is one of our big takeaways is that we, we were able to do it relatively quickly for this emergency, but that we need it actually in place so that anytime an emergency happens, some of these things are, are open and uh, we're able to take advantage of. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that you don't have to spend time going through the whole process again to bring it, things back exactly. to yeah, exactly. and, it, it, and it speaks to um, something Senator Brock uh, has rightfully said from the beginning, which is this document can be used for many different kinds of emergencies and not just if we have another uh, surge in the pandemic, that this can really help us figure out how to respond to any emergency going forward. Right. And, and what we've learned should do that, Becca. I mean, uh, so, yes. Uh, anything else on page three that comes well, to mind? I, I think I'd go back to sh something all of us have said in a way, which is communication. I think that two key things, unlike sort of sadly our national government, is Vermont, you know, we've, we've made decisions based on facts and data combined with communication. And the I, I think that the constant press conference, you know, the regular press conferences, just like Andrew Cuomo's, um, you know, that people rely on them uh, 
just to hear what's going on every, you know, every other day or so, those are really been great strengths. Uh, it, and that adds to the transparency yeah. issue that we have earlier on. So that could be built on all that. Okay. And one, um, the bullet that says the General Assembly and the governor were largely able to achieve consensus. Was that a lesson learned or was that just, you know, kind of an Probably effect? more an observation. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we sadly haven't gotten. I think you've we've said that in other ways that one of the really important things is to row together. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, that's should, all that, I could, should yeah. that go as part of the preamble? Just sort of mm -hmm. a, these mm -hmm. are. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and I think it's an underscore value and, and it's a value that help make things happen faster so mm -hmm. that that cooperation helps us to be nimble and, and respond effectively together. Well, in a way, though, I, I think it is kind of a lessons learned for the future because yeah. it suggests that if you have a more partisan uh, environment, for example, in a future crisis, uh, we should learn the lesson that if we want to get through this, we got to get together because otherwise mm -hmm. things will grind to a halt. And I, that to me is a lesson. Yeah. yeah. And, but I think we said that when we said we put political partisanship aside. So, uh, yeah. you know, I think it, it says the same thing. Okay. Uh, uh, let's move if we can to uh, page four. And Half of Senator Brock is Senator over Senator in this Senator session. McCormick. We're on page four of 10, and I would like to yeah. make sure, obviously, that we finish on time. Uh, Senator McCormick. Yes. Yeah, just briefly. Uh, thanks, Becca. Before we. Uh, uh, leave the issue of, of bipartisanship. The bipartisanship was easy because the issue really did not break down along partisan right. lines. If you got a, a deadly, highly contagious epidemic, what's the Republican answer to that as opposed to the Democratic answer? All of us, are, our answer is stop the damn epidemic, you know? And, uh, um, Remember back during Irene, there was in Bethel, the, the, there was a problem about the Democrats and the Republicans. One of the most conservative Republicans in town came up. He said, Senator, I just heard they're running out of drinking water in Rochester. What's the liberal answer to that? <laughs> I said, get water to Rochester. <laughs> he said, that's a conservative answer. And we loaded up the truck. <laughs> so in any, in any case, I, I think we want to say that nobody was really asked to eat their words. No one had to look the other way to be bipartisan. So, I, if we, so if we're advocating for that, is that it was actually fairly easy because of the nature of the problem. That's all. Okay. Let's move to the top of page four. Uh, and particularly under the challenges and shortcomings, uh, the things that we have seen. And these are observations or examples or uh, concerns or things that we perhaps could have done better. Oh. I, I, I don't know how we do an overall bullet that says we have to come up with a way to get, to get financial help out e easier. Once we've decided what that avenue is we've got to be able to do it more effectively and quicker I, I don't know how we i mean that combines so many of these bullets i mean it's just yeah it's called out in bullet number three else yeah and it's an observation there it's an observation of well this is less learned this is what happened i don't know that we necessarily have the solution uh for the future at this point uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's like the bullet point number five, which, by the way, I would go by numbers instead of bullet points because whenever you talk about a, a long right. pointed list, you always have to say like bullet point number seven. Right. Well just put them as numbers, but especially if it gets to be a smaller list, where it says many of our small businesses will not survive this emergency. Well, okay, yeah, we need. So we have several of those kind of observations that I think could be consolidated or right well and i think your use andy of that word observation i think observations are different from actual you know 
challenges or shortcomings or priorities. I, I agree. Okay. The only problem with numbering them is that it implies a ranking. Yeah. I don't know if people, what we think about that, maybe it's inescapable, but if we are ranking them, I think we should do that <clears throat> pretty deliberately. I mean, uh, I don't know exactly how, but I'm not sure I would go with data collection for the first one, for instance, ahead of PPE or the UI stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, maybe, maybe Senator Ballot and I, as we as we put this together, we'll wrestle with that point and have a well, bit. Yeah, and it goes to the bigger point of do we start each section with kind of the, the biggest takeaways and then flush it out with a few other bullets? I mean, yeah, that's what I approach it. Uh, some of these become duplicative also because, you know, some are strengths and some are also weaknesses and some certainly are plans for the future. You know, we continually, like in the last bullet, deal with communication multiple times during the course of this report. Right. Uh, but in slightly different ways, but that does tend to make it a little bit longer than perhaps it has to be. And so we should perhaps look at that again. Uh, the fourth bullet from the bottom, I think is a clear takeaway uh, that, that of lessons learned that, that we need more effective, clearer messaging portals into every system uh, that, you know, we all know which are the good, you know, I, I hate all the jargon, but when you land on a page, we all know which ones are clearer and which ones aren't. And I guess that we call that dashboards, but whatever we call it, that is, you know, so many people have told me they were confused by things and didn't know where to, you know, how to navigate it all. All of it needs to be simpler, easier, more direct. Just that that's, uh, I think, something we've, a big takeaway. And the fifth call? bullet point, yeah, the fifth bullet point up from the bottom of that yeah. page, I think, can be deleted. We've already yeah. said that a thousand times elsewhere about the need for right broadband and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Let's move to page five. I think the first three bullets could be flushed, consolidated, and edited. It uh, they all sort of slightly get to the same thing. Um, okay. Any other comments? The fourth bullet point can be deleted again because we've already said it. Which yeah. one? The fourth bullet point down about yeah activity. Yeah. Well, that, that's going to be its own section, I would think, yeah. and then all of the things come under it. Yeah. Well, we're saying the same thing in a way, but we're also saying it slightly differently and from a somewhat different perspective. I, I think yeah. one of the things in the first three bullet points, when we look at how we work together, uh, and the difference between working together remotely and working together in person. I mean, I think that for me, I am appreciating how much work in getting to yes, we actually do in the hallway. Uh, yeah. and, and how much of, of our uh, understanding the barriers each of us face to certain policy or to certain work that, that isn't necessarily a public thing. I mean, not everything, and and how much of the that is important to our moving forward in our policy work together, and I think that's a, an intangible but very important aspect of our working in person that we are failing to have the time for that kind of work mm -hmm. it, remotely, and, and I, um, it, it's true. There's, it's just. 
unless you're going to pick up the phone immediately after a, a meeting together, a Zoom meeting, and, and address that. And we often don't have time for that because then we're rushing to go get a bite of lunch before your next meeting starts. Or, you know. <laughs> or doing it during the meeting, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Or, as, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> as we now all know. Well, in a way, you know, some of this does become, though, a bit duplicative because as we find uh, a uh, an issue of something that didn't work particularly well, and then you go to the section of the challenges for the future, well, it's, you know, how do you fix the thing that didn't work particularly well? So, again, we have these uh, last, uh, uh, from the bottom, uh, the, the third from the bottom and the second from the bottom, or the third from the bottom in particular uh, is, is something that we've, we've, we've talked more and more about mm -hmm. and, and repeatedly. And again, it's how we consolidate that. You know, it's uh, I, again, I think, you know, the notion of creating a report that is somewhat less lengthy, has somewhat fewer bullets that might be helpful. But, you know, I'm reminded of that quote falsely attributed to Abraham Lincoln about the Gettysburg Address. I would have written a shorter speech, but it would have taken too long. <laughs> well, well yeah. we could all, you know, commit to taking a pass and slashing out or combining some of these. We're all cranking. I, I, um, I know that. So, you know, if we, if any of us get the time by eight o'clock tonight to do that, we could send it to you, uh, you know, with a short deadline on our side. <laughs> So you're not left waiting and not doing, no, I, I don't know. I don't know. We also, it's also pretty good and we could just ship it right now if that. <laughs> well, I, I, I do one or two, but one, I mean, I think there's some con basic consolidation we could do to make it a little less to do. Brian is pointing out, we do mention the, but I think Chris, to go to that point, one of the biggest bullets that we identify also all the way through this is how vulnerable Vermonters were much more vulnerable than I think we thought. So, you know, here the second bullet from the bottom is many Vermonters fa face food insecurity. Well, they faced a lot of insecurities that, and a lot of, I would say vulnerability that, that it was the, the, the protective sheath was only paycheck to paycheck. I mean, it was the vulnerable sheath is that it's, it, 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 it's economic, um, insecurity in large measure. And I think that is really may surprise. I mean, it doesn't surprise those of us who've heard it, but to see it was really stark. And um, anyway, I think Senator that's. A thing. Did you have something, Senator Ballant? No, okay. <laughs> Senator McCormick. Thanks. Uh, uh, I think what we can do is go back to what we, when we were taught in middle school, how to write a paper. Um, one thing we can do is just go through this long list and find duplications. And there's, there actually are duplications. There, and some, where they're not perfect to, perfectly duplicative, uh, they're both covering different aspects of the same thing. And, and kind of, it's just like if you were writing your weekly legislative report, uh, how you do the rewrite. The other thing is, to think in terms of categories. I think we can get a number of, of, of these one-liners and, and you realize which groups each they, they fall into and then a heading for that group. So just communications and everything for having to do with communications. We can break it down, I think, uh, the economy, the macro economy of the state, right. the business economy, the finances of the state, individual family finances. And, and, and they would all go under the larger heading of financial. And then communication. And the same thing with communicating the, the computer stuff, the, the lack of a human being behind the computer, and also communicating the governor's edicts and uh, communicating back and forth. And I, and I think it could be, and of course it's easy for me to say because I hadn't planned on actually doing any rewriting. I will, I will make an offer if I can find the time today. I'll try to get something done. That would be great. What I was going to say before when I had food in my mouth, Senator Brock, was that I know for me, I am, I do not have even a moment to use the bathroom until 530 today because I have <laughs> Zooms all day long. So if there are people in the group that have even just a little extra time, I know we're all flat out. I think having a small group, two or three, just bang out 
and get us another draft. Um, but I know that I do not have the time today. So I just wanted to put that out yeah. there and transparent in that way. I'll see if I could steal time. I don't have the time either, but yeah. Well, I mean, we I all maybe... have that problem, as you know, right. but to the extent that uh, we can get input from any of you to us, and we know that the input will be different, then we have some things to select from that we can put together without having to start from scratch. And that would be very, very helpful. Yeah, well, the, the young people are supposedly good at multitasking. Older people were actually not only not taught to multitask, we were taught not to multitask. One thing at a time, Dick. Thank so. goodness I'm old. <laughs> that must have been for men. <laughs> yeah. Finish we what you're doing. Fifteen minutes and five pages else. to go. So let's move turn on 30, uh, to. I don't know if I can classify as young anymore. <laughs> let's move on to uh, the balance of page five. Uh, any other comments on that before we move to the next page? Uh, we have, you know, just there's consolidation to do here. The, mm -hmm. the last, yeah. yeah, it's just ongoing. Okay, you know, we're on page six at this point. Now there, one of the things that we did is we, we simply included the straight observations from JFO and Ledge Council, at least at a high level, uh, based on material that they provided us without going into depth. Randy, I think the first three bullet points can all be combined, consolidated, maybe even the first four. Um, they all have to do with dairy and farms. Um, I don't, I mean, I think they're all related. I don't think each of them needs a bullet. Okay. And for that matter, uh, uh, yeah. it may well be the last bullet point on page five as part of that also. Yeah, well also, uh, the, yeah. well, I think the, the food insecurity is, is its own separate issue because the coordination that you mentioned in bullet five here on page six goes with the last two bullets of page five, which is how do we coordinate better the food distribution for the, 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 the enormous food insecurity in the state? How do we better coordinate and make it seamless, the distribution and distri the distribution to the outlets and then the distribution to the people? Yep. Let's move to the last bullet on page six and, and following changes that should be made uh, going forward. And then on to page seven. I'm not sure I understand. Continuity oh. of. I'm sorry, Chris. Well, the General Assembly's continuity of government plans. Um, what do you mean? Do you mean that, uh, that's a term that is used to talk about our business contingency plan of what do we do to ensure that we stay in business doing what we're supposed to do in the event of various kinds of crises. Uh, there are continuity of government plan. There, there is, in fact, a continuity of government plan relative to uh, uh, legislative operations uh, that's maintained by uh, the sergeant at arms and also by the Capitol Police, for example, to keep us in business. Right. But there aren't real, that I can determine, continuity government plans involving the legislature and what the legislature itself does. I read this okay. and I think it, you mean, what, what do we do if the speaker dies? Well, yeah. that's another, that is part of it. And mm -hmm. it, it, yes. we do address that later in the report because it is, it is unclear. Uh, it's also unclear uh, in terms of just succession planning uh, from the administration. It stops at a certain point and doesn't go into the level of depth that you see uh, with the federal government. And of course, the question that, that I think we've raised here is what happens if there's a terrorist attack on the state house during the State of the Union address? What happens? And well, again, you say these may be very unlikely things to happen, but you know, a pandemic was pretty unlikely too. Right. But that goes to the sergeant at arms and Capitol Police. I think we would want it. They do have that kind of operational plan for how Correct. we survive that. Uh, but what 
is, isn't there, as you say, is the sort of more legislative, you know, the inner working. They, I think they, and Matt can explain it better than we, but there is the plan for physical, the physicality and operational aspect, yes. but, but not the uh, interpersonal hierarchy, you know, the who does what uh, in terms of leadership part. I don't have a better word for it at this hour. Again, other changes that need to be made going forward, there are a, a list of a variety of things to think about on pages, the bottom of page six, and then through page seven. Any comment on any of those items? Any consolidation that you think is is, is useful or desirable to have? Anything well, that observational that perhaps should be deleted? Well, I think a lot of these bullets can be consolidated. I mean, just uh, we need to have contact information for absolutely everybody and emergency contact information. So that's a couple bullets that could be consolidated. Okay. I, I have a question for the editing piece, just quick a process. Is there any way to get a Word document of this that we'd be able to rearrange ourselves and set, you know, I'm, I print it out, but I go, you're gonna get my chicken handwriting scratch notes, or I can track changes when I when I look at a Word document. It might be easier for us, you know. I'll just save it as parent edits, and you know, everyone put their last name edits. And yeah, then I've got a Word document of this. Uh, uh, Mike, would it be possible to send a Word document uh, uh, to each member of the committee? Yes. I'm Mike, just, are you there? Yep, I'm here. I'm sending it now. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Amazing. Okay. Anything else on page seven, other than the the the, the general theme of consolidation and uh, avoiding duplication? Okay. Let's go to page eight, which continues that theme of things that we need to do. And again, uh, JFO and Ledge Council are listed separately based on their their own input. It's great that we have their input. That was very good of you to, to reach out to them. Now, as we move on then to the bottom of eight of doing what do we need to do better to prepare for the next crisis. And again, the, some of those recurring themes keep popping back up of broadband, of course. Well, I, I think one of the key takeaways is we need our statutes to be better prepared to kick into action a different set of opportunities mm -hmm. in our statutes to kick into action when a declared crisis, when a crisis, when something is declared as a crisis. So that, I mean, we, you know, to go, I don't, but I don't want to re repeat, but I mean, I think that's one of the things is we need to be better prepared in our statutes to enable things to happen if X Y or Z occur. And much of what we've done is particular to this pandemic and this situation. And what do we have to do to say, you know, this is the type of thing that happens regardless of the emergency and that these things should kick into place, whether it's, you know, the legislature can act remotely or, or whatever it is, but do we need to have something in place? You talked about a handbook. Um, is that something that needs to be stated, that there are things that would kick in? Well, we also, I think, have to recognize that uh, there are different kinds of crises that, divide, that demand different kinds of responses. And the key, in a way, is to find those things that really transcend the type of crisis uh, that we, we, we put in, in effect, as one section that kicks in, but at the same time, recognize that we can't really manage uh, a crisis that we may try to think about every kind of crisis, but we're not going to think about every kind of crisis. And we also don't have the ability to manage what a future legislature does. So mm -hmm. it's that getting that balance point uh, of, of what we put into legislation like that is gonna be the trick. Mm -hmm. And I don't, we're not gonna think through that sufficiently to put it in this report, but just at a high level, touch on it. I, I can't have my name advocating to end snow days <laughs> report I, I won't be invited to dinner um, yeah. so randy chris and i have a ag meeting in five minutes 
Um, uh, and I have an economic yeah. development committee meeting. Mm -hmm. in, in, we all have committee, mm -hmm. I think. So, so therefore, we'll 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 skip over the last two pages because they aren't really important anyway. <laughs> so let's go very very quickly here of being prepared for the next crisis of uh, anything on a high level. We, we're, we're at the top of page nine at this point. We've already sure. talked about uh, this issue of critical IT systems, the third bullet down, and again, elevating and consolidating some of those pieces uh, and talking about this history of IT projects uh, uh, of how we will we do better going forward. Uh, the, a lot of, the, the a lot better of telehealth and telephone triage plan, again, a lot of that does in fact go together. Andy, sorry, there, there's a lot of questions in this section. So I wondered if those questions would be better broken up. Like this is what 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 do we need to do better? But then we're just a bunch of questions, like which are good questions. <laughs> maybe I would have put the answers in if I'd known them. <laughs> that's right. I was gonna say that's called the kitchen sink. <laughs> right. But maybe we put all the questions in this site. Like here are the questions that we need to answer. Put them in statement next time. Okay. All right. Uh, as we go into the top of page 10, these again, in many cases, are more questions of how the General Assembly would meet if a joint meeting were required and social distances was needed. Uh, have we assessed the full range of risks? What happens if there's no internet availability? And these are, these are all questions. But they're things that, as we plan for the next uh, uh, contingency, the next event, they're things that we need to be thinking about now. And the purpose of this is really to identify many of those things. Because that's a lesson that, you know, we wouldn't have thought uh, about many of these things to even try to identify had we not gone through an exercise like this. Anything else uh, before we, we've got about two minutes before we have to move on uh, to our next event. Is there anything else that any member of the committee would like to, to raise? Well, just thanks for getting it to this point. Because <laughs> there's a lot. So, I mean, we've actually there's a lot so much. here. Uh, <laughs> let us then look at this evening of those folks who are going to voluntarily help to try to consolidate some of this stuff. Do you want to do this on a gross basis? Or do you each want to take a perhaps a section and attack? My sense is doing it on a gross basis so that we have a variety of perspectives is probably the better way. And that way, when Becca and I, beginning tomorrow, try to put this together in final form, we'll have all of those thoughts consolidated. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, thank you all very, very much for all the help. Uh, it's been great. You guys have really, you, you've written this report. We certainly haven't because of the input you have. So thank you. And uh, we'll determine based on how what we get back, how quickly we can put together a final product, whether we not we, we need to meet again, or whether based on the input today, we can produce the final report. So on that note, it's just about three minutes to nine. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank Thanks, you. Randy.